we have failed as educators to instill a sense of eternal curiosity within you so that you become a lifelong learner. Right. You will spend many more years of your life not in school than in mm -hmm. school. Right. And if you're glad you're out of school, then your knowledge of the world, your wisdom, your insights have ossified mm -hmm. in that moment. And that then becomes your forever perspective on decisions you make in life, yet the world keeps changing. And so, so the failure of the educational system is you think and you believe and you feel that learning is a chore rather than a delight. Students who get straight A's do so not because of good teachers, but in spite of bad teachers. And what that means is if you get straight A's, that meant you got straight A's even when you had bad teachers. That's what straight A's means. So the quality of the teacher was irrelevant to your performance. Mm. So you're an independent learner yeah. at that point. Then there are people who get bad grades everywhere, so good teachers didn't make any difference to them, so they're bad students. But for most people, a good teacher enables them to do better, and a bad teacher they don't do as well. That's for most people. And so... so all I'm saying is we need good teachers, and b bad teachers, there should be a way to filter them out. I would de-emphasize the value the educational system places on what grades you got yeah. and figure out ways to assess or rather to promote or to nurture your enthusiasm for learning. And... Because of this, what happens? You know what happens? There are people who get high grades. These are the people who pay attention in class, and all their homeworks are handed in on time, and they might become valedictorian. And, however, if you look at the biggest shakers and movers in society, in practically any field, none of them were valedictorians. Mm -hmm. The most, if you've read a lot of business, but you know CEOs were never mm -hmm. the top of their class mm -hmm. or entrepreneurs were never the top of their class. They were too distracted by other thoughts and ideas. My grades in school were pretty average. Because they were average, no teacher at any time in my life, K through 12, 16, and 20, okay, would have ever said, see that guy Tyson? Watch him, he'll go far. None of them. Even though I was all into the universe. No one said that. No one would have said that had you asked. Had you walked into the classroom and I'm in the class and asked the teacher, who's going to go far in this class? I would have never shown up on the I list. I love them. Any teacher. Yeah. Yet, it's not like I was a late bloomer. I've known I was interested in the universe since I was nine. And at age 11, you ask me what I want to be when I grow up, that annoying question adults always ask kids. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. said, I want to be an astrophysicist. And I was in the astronomy club. And I walked dogs and used that money, walked other people's dogs, used that money to buy my first telescope. At age 14, all of this was going on, and it doesn't show up on a grade Shh. in my school. And so the teacher doesn't see that. They don't know it. They don't even care. They just care what grades you yep. got. All I'm saying is, a person is so much more than the, the numerics of their GPA that if you only focus on a GPA, you will lose mm. people. There'll be people who will go unrecognized, unsupported, unidentified in the school system. Maybe the school, rather than judging you whether you have passion, yeah. they should find ways to instill passion within you. Mm -hmm. And then you're graded by how much more passion you had after the class than you did before, rather than how much you walked in there with. When assessing the promise and performance of a student, you need to look at more than their GPA. I don't mind standardized exams. I don't mind you want to give somebody an IQ test. I don't have a problem with any test. But the moment you administer a test and then use that against the person, because they didn't score high enough on this test above some threshold that yeah. you have cut off, and only then do you give them opportunities. This is using educational systems and tools against the progress of students rather than for them. When I was in sixth grade, that was still contained in an elementary school, I was not in what they called the smartest class because they, 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 they were identified by the system, and, and they took French. 
they took a foreign language. And I said, well, why can't I take a foreign? Well, you're not, you're, you're, you, you don't belong in that class, mm. okay? You got to go in the second class. And uh, they were given opportunities that I really wanted to have. And I was denied it because some educational construct declared that I was unworthy of it. And so uh, that I've been thinking about that ever since because I was already ambitious as a kid. What a school should say is don't reserve all your highest praises for the people who get the highest grades. Hmm. Do some other searching in the total life of the person. Suppose there's someone who who is who in in middle school or high school is taking care of their younger kid, babysitting, walking dogs, doing this, uh, shopping, do it, and figured out a way to make that efficient and uh, created a budget for the family because they couldn't wow. figure that. Look what that is! Oh my gosh, the person is figuring out life, and no one was there to train them. That's ambition. If you're a deadbeat sitting at home watching TV and and you don't have good grades, I got nothing for you mm. at that point. But take a look at the total package, because in life, the total package is what's going to matter. I have teacher comment. I still have my report cards. Uh, Neil is um, less social involvement and more academic diligence is in order. What they're saying is my social energy, my social energy was a negative in that classroom. By the way, I wasn't purposefully disruptive. It was more a gurgling of energy, you know, okay? That was a negative. And rather than saying... There could be some value to this later on. He might become a communicator because he's communicating with all these people at all these right, different exactly. times. No one is thinking that. Right. All they can see is the grade in their class. That's why none of the teachers would have said, look at him. He'll go far. If you got a 97 on your exam instead of 100, are you going to complain to your teacher? <laughs> are you going to complain if it's like hand graded? And Are you going to complain? We say, oh, okay, it's 97, it's just as good as 100, I don't care. If you're going to complain, that means you're after the grade more than you're after learning.